Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. So far, I've been your host, Zero Yeti, and this week we have something special. We have the long-awaited Asian Week, which means all animals featured this week are from Asia. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first animal of the week being the Lar Gibbon, also known as the white hand Gibbon. It is an endangered primate in the Gibbon family. Hylobotidae, which is native throughout Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, China, Myanmar, Burma, Thailand, and northern Sumatra. They sport the largest contiguous range of any gibbon species and typically inhabit lowland and submontane rainforests, as well as mixed deciduous bamboo forests and seasonal evergreen forests. They are a diurnal, arboreal, and social species which lives in familial groups comprised of a mated pair or polyandrous group and their young offspring, which often communicate via their loud and distinctive calls. The diet is comprised mostly of fruit, leaves, flowers, vines, insects, and eggs. Lar gibbons are themselves eaten by tigers, cloud leopards, marble cats, crested serpent eagles, and reticulated pythons. Uh, both sexes reach around 16 to 24 inches or 41 to 61 centimeters in head to body length and around 8 to 17 pounds or 3.6 to 7.7 kilograms in weight. As gibbons, they are true brachiators, propelling themselves through the forest by swinging under branches using their arms. Reflecting this mode of locomotion, the lar gibbon has curved fingers elongated hands and extremely long arms and relatively short hind legs. The fur on this animal can vary from dark brown to ginger, tan, or cream in coloration. Its face is typically black with a distinctive white ring of hair around it. Its hands and feet are also white. Mating may occur year-round, but typically peaks during the dry season around March. After a six to seven month pregnancy, a mother lar gibbon will give birth to a single baby. For the four, first four to six months of the baby's life, the infant is nursed and cared for, carried around by its mother. She then carries it around less and less, and, be, and it begins eating solid food, before becoming fully weaned by around two years of age. After weaning, it is primarily cared for by its older siblings, and after three years, it, is in, turn, it in turn starts caring for its younger siblings. Uh, Lar gibbons reach sexual maturity around six to nine years of age, at which point they leave their familial groups in search of mates. Under ideal conditions, a lar gibbon may live upwards of 25 years. Next up, we have Stellar Sea Eagle, also known as the Pacific Sea Eagle or White Shouldered Eagle, it is a very large diurnal bird of prey in the family Asipiptridae, which is native to Northeast Asia, where it lives in Russia, Korea, Japan, China, and Taiwan. It is also a regular vagrant to Alaska and Western Canada. These birds typically live alone in pairs or in small flocks uh, along coastlines and islands, but they are also known to dwell in and around wetlands, large rivers, and mountain lakes. Their diet is comprised primarily of fish, particularly salmon, cod, trout, and pollock. But they are also known to feed upon crabs, mussels, squid, worms, geese, ducks, gulls, herons, cranes, grouse, murres, cormorants, owls, auklets, crows, ravens, ptarmigan, albatross, hares, foxes, mink, sable, vole, deer, ermine, small dogs, young seals, and sea lions. Uh, they are also themselves occasionally preyed by sables, ermines, and bears. Reach around 2.9 to 3.5 feet, or 85 to 105 centimeters tall, uh, 11 to 22 pounds, or 9 to 10 kilograms in weight, and with a 6.5 to 8.2 foot, or 1.95 to 2.5 meter wingspan, the stellar sea eagle is the heaviest species of eagle and one of the largest raptors. It has a sturdy body covered in dark brown to black plumage, with white wings and tail, and a yellow to orange beak and talons. Uh, the breeding season occurs from February to March, during which time these birds gather in loose colonies, and after each other, after courting each other, pairs build nests out of sticks atop high trees or rocky outcrops. Here, one to three greenish-white eggs are laid, and then incubated for around 39 to 45 days. 
the eaglets fledge in August or in early September, and under ideal conditions, the stellar sea eagle will reach sexual maturity around four years of age and live up to 25. Next up is the water buffalo, Buaba, bu, sorry, Bubbleus bubbleus, also known as the domestic water buffalo or Asian water buffalo, it is a large bovid species which is originally native to the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia, but they have now become widespread throughout the Middle East, parts of Africa, Europe, Australia, South America, North America, and the Caribbean. Today, two extant types of water buffalo are recognized based on morphological and behavioral differences. The river buffalo, which was first domesticated in the Indian subcontinent some 6,300 years ago, and then it spread further west to the Balkans, Egypt, and Italy. And then there's the swamp buffalo, which was first domesticated some 7,000 years ago in the Indo-Chinese peninsula, which it in turn has spread throughout Southeast Asia as well up north to central China and then west to Assam, India. Both types have been raised for thousands of years as work animals and for their meat and milk. Both are well developed and adapted to living in hot and humid climates, such as wet grasslands, swamps, floodplains, river valleys, marshes, deltas, and mangrove forests, with river buffalo preferring deeper, moving waterways while swamp buffalo prefer shallower, more muddy areas. Water buffalo feed upon aquatic plants, particularly reeds, as well as grasses, forbs, leaves, flowers, stems, fruit, vegetables, legumes, nuts, and grains. Water buffalo are preyed upon by crocodilians, bears, tigers, leopards, jaguars, dingoes, and wolves. Uh, for both types, the body size may vary greatly amongst individual populations, ranging from around 47 to 63 inches or 120 to 160 centimeters tall at the withers, uh, 118 to 157 inches or 300 to 400 centimeters in length, and weighing around 660 to 2,200 pounds or 300 to 1,000 kilograms. River buffaloes typically have longer faces, smaller girths, and bigger limbs than swamp buffaloes, with horns that grow down and back before spiraling upwards. In comparison, swamp buffaloes have wider faces, heavier and stockier bodies, and horns that grow outward and to the sides, curving in a semicircle. River buffalo are also typically black or dark brown, while swamp buffalo are typically gray or slate blue in coloration. After a 9 to 11 month pregnancy, a mother water buffalo will give birth to one to two calves. Under ideal conditions, a water buffalo will reach sexual maturity around 1.5 to 3 years of age, which males uh, reach sexual maturity later than females, and water buffalo may live up to 40 years. Next up, we have Eryx miliaris, or miliaris, which is known as the dwarf sand boa, the desert sand boa, or the tartar sand boa. It is a species of snake in the Boidae family, which is endemic to the desert scrublands and dry grasslands of Mongolia, Uzbekistan, southern Russia, northwestern China, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Turkmenistan. The Tartar Sanbo spends much of its time burrowing into the soil, and its eyes and nostrils are shifted to the upper part of its head, which makes it possible for the snake to observe both prey and predators unnoticed from their burrows underneath the sand. Uh, it feeds primarily upon small birds, lizards, and small mammals, which it catches with a quick strike before killing the prey via constriction. They are themselves preyed upon by mustelids, foxes, jackals, and birds of prey. Despite one of its common names being the dwarf samboa, Eryx miliaris is one of the larger members of the genus Eryx. Uh, females are often bigger, reaching up to 4 feet or 122 centimeters in length, while most males rarely reach upwards of 1 point, or 2.5 feet or a 76 centimeters. They sport a strong, rounded body, short, thick tail, and slightly flattened head. The coloration varies between specific locales, but is typically some blotchy mixture of brown, yellow, red, tan, green, orange, and or black. This helps the animal to camouflage into its surroundings. 
Like most boas, the Tartar Sambo is viparous. And will, in July to August, females typically give birth to 7 to 10 snakelets. Under ideal conditions, the Tartar Sambo will reach sexual maturity around 4 years of age and will live up to 24 years. Our next animal is that of the Siamese fighting fish, Beta splendus. Commonly known as the beta, it is a 2.4 to 3 inch long or 8 to or 6 to 8 centimeter long freshwater fish native to Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam, and has been introduced throughout Southeast Australia, Brazil, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, the southeastern United States, and Singapore. It is one of 73 species in the genus Beta, but the only one eponymously called Beta. Owing to its global popularity as Beta splendus are among the most popular aquarium fish and pets in the world due to their diverse and colorful morphology and relatively low maintenance. Beta splendus typically inhabit shallow bodies of water with abundant vegetation, including marshes, floodplains, and paddy fields. The prevalence of rice farming across Southeast Asia, uh, which provide ideal habitat for betas, led to their discovery and subsequent domestication by humans at least 1,000 years ago. They were initially bred for aggression and subject to gambling matches akin to cockfighting. This, be this is because betas are highly territorial, with males prone to attacking each other if housed in the same tank. Without means of escape, this will likely result in the death of one or both fish. Female betas can also become territorial towards one another in confined spaces. Betas sport lung a lung-like labyrinth organ, which allows them to breed directly from the air. This, in turn, allows them to thrive in harsher environments that most other freshwater fish wouldn't survive. They are carnivorous, feeding upon zooplankton, small crustaceans, worms, larvae, and aquatic insects. Betas, in turn, are eaten by larger crustaceans, amphibians, turtles, larger fish, and some fishing birds. If interested in a female, Male betas will flare their gills, spread their fins, and twist their bodies and dance like performances. Receptive females will respond by darkening in color and developing vertical lines known as breeding bars. Males then, males then build a bubble nest of various sizes and thicknesses on the surface of the water, typically around a plant or a rock. Here the female will lay 10 to 40 eggs, which the male will then fertilize and secure to the nest before chasing the female off. This is because the female will eat eggs and offspring. Uh, the male then cares for the young alone. After a 24 to 36 hour incubation period, the eggs typically hatch as fry and remain in their nest for two to three more days before venturing out. At this point, most young are on their own, but some may remain under their father's care for three to six weeks. In ideal conditions, a beta will reach sexual maturity around four to five months of age and live upwards of five years. Next up is the snow leopard, also commonly known as the onse. It is a species of large cat in the genus Panthera and the family Felidae, which is native throughout Central and Southern Asia, with populations existing in Russia, Mongolia, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Tibet, Nepal, Bhutan, and China. They are generally solitary and crepuscular cats, which inhabit mountainous alpine and subalpine meadows and shrubby rock faces at elevations of 9,800 to 14,800 feet, or 3,000 to 4,500 meters, but also live at lower elevations below the tree line in the northern parts of their range. Snow leopards are amazing predators known to actively pursue prey down steep mountainsides. Said prey is known to include blue sheep, tar, argali, markhor, goats, sheep, yaks, marmots, pikas, voles, hares, mice, rabbits, rats, squirrels, civets, ibex, wild boar, musk deer, roe deer, tokken, thorolds deer, macaques, horses, Bactrian camels, and various birds. After the kill is made, a snow leopard often drags the carcass to a safe location to feed on for several weeks. Snow leopards also eat a considerable amount of vegetable, vegetable material, including grasses, leaves, fruits, and twigs. Reaching around 22 inches or 56 centimeters tall at the shoulder, uh, 60 to 100 inches or 155 to 255 centimeters long, 
and 55 to 165 pounds or 25 to 75 kilograms in weight, they are stocky and short legs, sporting a large head, big feet, and a long, flexible tail. It's white to gray fur with black rosettes across the body and black spots on its face is extremely thick and well insulated, which helps it comfortably withstand sub-zero temperatures as low as negative 13 Fahrenheit or negative 25 Celsius. Mating typically occurs in late winter to early spring, with pairs finding each other through scent marking and long-distance calls. Once they meet, they will mate multiple times over several days. And after a three-month pregnancy, a mother snow leopard will give birth to between two and seven cubs, which remain by their mother's side for around two years. Under ideal conditions, snow leopard will reach mature around two to three years of age and live up to 25. And our extinct animal of the week is Dinochirus, which is a genus of unusual large ornithomimosaurus which lived throughout what is now Mongolia during the Maastrichtian age of the late Cretaceous, some 72 to 66 million years ago. The first known fossil remains of Dinochirus, consisting of three vertebrae, five ribs, and a pair of massive arms, were discovered by Polish, pale- Polish paleontologist Zofia Kailan-Jarawaska in 1965 in the Namek Basin of the Gobi Desert, during a joint Polish-Mongolian expedition. The specimen was made the holotype of Dinochirus mirificus and named by Holtska Omoliska and Iwa Ronowisks in 1970. The generic name is derived from the Greek dinos, meaning horrible, and kir, meaning hand, due to the size and strong claws of the forelimbs. The specific name comes from Latin and means unusual or peculiar chosen for the unusual structure of the forelimbs. Due to the sheer size of the animal's arms and lack of other remains, over the next half century, Dinochirus became infamous as one of the most enigmatic... I never can say that word. Enigmatic, bizarre, and mysterious dinosaurs, and with there being wild speculation as to what the rest of the animal might look like. Then in 2013, 48 years after the first fossils were found in the Gobi Desert, two new partial skeletons were confiscated from fossil poachers on the black market. Additionally, a skull, left hand, and pair of feet were donated and repatriated to the Central Museum of Mongolian Dinosaurs by fossil collector Francois Illescul. Uh, thanks to these specimens, a much more complete picture of Dinochirus is known. Standing around 12 to 14 feet, or 3.6 to 4.4 meters tall at the hip, and reach around 36 to 40 feet, or 11 to 12 meters long, and around 6.5 to 7.5 tons in weight, is the largest known ornithomimosaurian, and it had a wide, elongated skull with upper and lower jaws that widened out to form a rounded spoonbill shape. They have the largest known forelimbs of any bipedal animal, with big hands tipped in long recurved claws. They had large bulky they had a large bulky torso with gross rising from their backs, which may have formed either a heavily built sail or a large fatty muscular hump. Sporting robust hind legs and a large tail, in life, Dinochirus likely inhabited swamps, wetlands, riverine forests, and riverine forests, and fed upon leaves, ferns, herbaceous and aquatic plants, as well as invertebrates and possibly fish. As always, take care to my guys, gals, non-binary pals. Have a wonderful day.